Spider-Man's Strongest Foes Peter Parker has some of the most colorful and memorable villains in comics. But not every villain is created equal. I'm looking at you, Swarm, the guy made of bees. <laughs> We're counting down Spidey's strongest villains. Number 10, Green Goblin. One of these days, one of us is going to inevitably kill the other. It's coming, Parker, sooner than you think. And when it does, you're going to have to choose. This man needs no introduction. The Green Goblin is Spidey's arch nemesis and one of his deadliest foes. He ranks at the bottom of our list, but don't let that fool you. Gobby has tormented Spider-Man since the early days of his career, leading to some of his most significant tragedies, including the death of Peter Parker's first love, Gwen Stacy. Goblin's physical strength and various gadgets are no doubt formidable, but the villain's true strength lies in his brilliance and madness. Goblin revels in the violence he can inflict on Peter Parker, whom he views as a son and heir in his own twisted way. That obsession with Spider-Man makes everything between these two personal. He is always finding new ways to attack Spidey, both physically and mentally. That's including kidnapping loved ones, torturing and drugging Peter Parker, and even faking Aunt May's death. Green Goblin's Powers and Abilities Norman Osborn was granted super strength and a rapid healing factor from his own chemical mixture he calls Goblin Formula. That concoction makes him powerful enough to toss people around like ragdolls and beat Spider-Man bloody. He's able to take heavy punishments and keep fighting, and even survive physical trauma that would kill a normal human. He's managed to survive falling from incredible heights and being stabbed by his own goblin glider. Speaking of the goblin glider, Osborn outfits himself with deadly technology of his own design. The goblin glider can travel nearly 100 miles per hour and is outfitted with blades and cannons to fire the goblin's signature pumpkin bombs. They can be used as blinding flash bombs or to release deadly gas. Others are more traditional explosives that are so hot they melt steel. All of those tricks and more, including laser shooting gloves, make Goblin one tough customer. Number 9. The Lizard In addition to the lizard's sheer strength, this villain has the added complication of being someone Peter Parker cares about. Kurt Connors is Peter Parker's teacher and Spider-Man's scientific mentor. Spidey would often go to Dr. Connors when he needed help with science problems or to create a formula to stop a villain. Unfortunately, all that goes out the window when Connors transforms into his monstrous alter ego, the Lizard. The transformations began after Connors experimented on himself with lizard DNA in order to regrow the arm he lost. Ever since that fateful day, Kurt Connors has been cursed with unpredictable transformations. Though he has occasionally believed himself to be cured or temporarily gained control over his lizard self, the monster always returns. Lizard's Monstrous Might as the lizard, Connors is super strong. He can toss cars around like toys and leap massive distances. Spidey usually needs to get creative and use his scientific mind to trap the lizard or revert him back to human form. His skin is tough enough that in all of their matches, Spider-Man's attacks are almost harmless. But if that brute physical strength wasn't enough, the lizard's prehensile tail gives him added power. He's able to swing the massive appendage at 70 miles per hour, crush concrete, and when wrapped around Spidey, not even the hero's super strength can help him break free. The lizard's jaw and razor sharp teeth are also incredibly powerful. The claws on his fingers can cut through metal like paper. The lizard even stole one of Spider-Man's signature moves, being able to stick to and climb walls like a gecko. Oh, and he can talk to lizards and control them, because why not? Not impressive enough? Well, our next villains are armed with the power of the elements, forcing Spidey to use all of his smarts to come out ahead. But before that, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload. And smash that like button for some plot armor today. Number 8. Sandman 
petty criminal turned supervillain, Flint Marco, the Sandman, has even dabbled with being a hero. Sandman's powers give him incredible potential that he is rarely able to tap into. Still, his powers of transformation make him a tough enemy. After exposure to radiation, Margot gained the ability to break himself down into grains of sand and completely control his form. Sandman has tried going straight a few times and using his powers for good, but eventually ends up on the wrong side of the law. Sandman's potential strength is largely untapped because of Marco's low ambitions. But in an alternate reality, where he witnessed a zombified Spider-Man murder the Sinister Six, Sandman showed just how much he is capable of. He disassembled himself into his sand form and flew down Spider-Man's throat. He slowly expanded within Spider-Man's stomach, causing the hero to slowly bloat and then explode from the inside out. Sandman's Stunning Strength Sandman has the ability to completely control his body at the molecular level. This lets him break down into millions of grains of sand and reassemble himself and change size and shape at will. This makes him effectively unkillable as he can put himself back together from any injury. He can control his body density, becoming rock hard or letting an enemy's punches go right through him. One of his favorite tactics is to turn his arms into massive weapons to bludgeon Spider-Man. Sandman can disperse himself into a cloud of sand to float on the breeze or hit opponents at high speed. He's even been able to make exact duplicates of himself that were capable of thinking and acting on their own. When zapped with an evolutionary ray that jump-started his powers, Sandman's physical strength increased and he formed hard spikes all over his body. In an alternate future, this powered up Sandman killed most of life on Earth. Pretty impressive for a petty criminal. Number 7. Electro Despite being a punk and a bit of a loser, Electro's sheer potential for destruction makes him one of Spidey's most dangerous enemies. It's just too bad for Max Dillon, he hasn't figured out how to use those powers to their full extent. A former electrician, Dylan was zapped with an overload of electricity while working on power lines. Granted vast control over electricity, Dylan soon turned to crime to use his powers for his own personal gain. He proved a formidable foe, with Spider-Man unable to even touch the bad guy without being zapped by electricity. Defeating Electro usually requires special rubber modifications to Spidey's suit. Electro has popped up over and over in pursuit of his own personal glory and to get revenge on Spider-Man. He was even directly responsible for the creation of a new team of Avengers. He used his electric powers to create a massive explosion that unleashed all of the supervillains imprisoned in the maximum security prison for powered criminals, the Raft. That breakout brought together the likes of Captain America, Iron Man, Luke Cage, and Spider-Man as a new team. To establish his own street cred after a series of defeats, Dylan tried to recreate his most notable accomplishments and destroyed an entire building. Electrifying powers Electro has the ability to channel and control electricity to deadly effect. He can shoot bolts of electricity and can augment his own internal stores of electricity by absorbing and redirecting electricity from batteries or power plants. On one occasion, he created a localized electromagnetic storm that trapped the Fantastic Four's Invisible Woman in a carbonized bubble. Dylan is able to surf on the electrical currents in power lines and even make temporary static bridges that allow him to float short distances. His control over the electromagnetic field in the local area even causes interference with Spider-Man's wall crawling powers and allows him to briefly manipulate and float metal objects. Electro has the potential to do even more damage with his elemental powers, but he is the definition of wasted potential. A smarter man would be even more creative and deadly. Unfortunately for Spidey, this next bad guy doesn't need smarts to use his powers, because it's powered by pure madness. Number 6. Carnage 
the offspring of Spider-Man's first symbiote villain, Venom. Carnage was originally even more powerful than its father, gifted with immense super strength. The ability to transform its crimson tendrils into razor-sharp weapons or an imitation of Spider-Man's webbing. This symbiote serial killer leaves destruction wherever he goes. In his first appearance, stopping Carnage required the combined power of Venom and Spider-Man. Carnage is even more dangerous due to bonding with the mass-murdering sociopath Cletus Cassidy. It proved to be even more deadly when bonded with Norman Osborn to become the Red Goblin. Carnage's Killer Capabilities Carnage is one tough customer, strong enough to toss around a helicopter like it was nothing. Spider-Man tried to face Carnage alone, but was quickly outclassed. Spider-Man joined up with his old enemy Venom, and they managed to temporarily separate Carnage from its host. The living fluid of the symbiote grants not just super strength, but incredible shape-shifting powers that Carnage uses to turn his arms into axes or other blades. Carnage can shoot pieces of itself like Spider-Man's web lines to stick to walls and swing through the city or just to kill. Carnage was once able to control its physical form to such a degree that it could kill someone through the phone by controlling its atoms back when computers were connected to the internet over phone lines, for you kiddos who don't remember. Carnage is a vampiric being that can feed on others of its kind to increase in power. When an army of symbiotes invaded Earth, Carnage fed on the invading aliens and increased in mass until he was larger than the Manhattan Bridge. The Carnage symbiote eventually bonded with Norman Osborn, who promised to show the creature new ways to kill. Eager to learn how to inflict new kinds of pain on victims, Carnage allowed Osborn total control over itself, as opposed to the usual symbiote hive mind. Under Osborn's control, Carnage implanted living spikes into the skulls of Spider-Man's loved ones that would have killed them all at Norman's command if they had not been saved by the heroic symbiote Anti-Venom. Peter Parker's old high school nemesis, Flash Thompson. Carnage then murdered Flash Thompson and began to kill people in Times Square indiscriminately with Carnage Bombs. These were symbiote-enhanced versions of his pumpkin bombs made from pieces of the symbiote that Osborn could control and speak through. As Red Goblin, Carnage was able to completely overpower Spider-Man, even when his strength was enhanced by the Venom symbiote, and was only defeated by tricking Norman into separating from Carnage. And yeah, yeah, he's a killer, but he hasn't killed Spider-Man, so how tough can he be, right? Don't worry, there are plenty of spider killers up ahead. Wait till you see who managed to kill Peter Parker not once, not twice, but eight times. Number five, Rhino. For sheer strength, it's tough to outclass the mighty Rhino, a brute force brawler. Rhino is one of the toughest foes Peter Parker has ever tussled with. Defeating the Rhino requires all of Spider-Man's speed and creative thinking. Or if you play the video games, jumping out of his way just in time to let him hit the wall. As he himself so elegantly put it, I'm Rhino! I knock things down! That's what I do! That's who I am! <laughs> what you see here is what you get. He's a big man in a rhino costume who cannot be stopped. Alexei Tsitsevich was a low-level enforcer for the Russian mob. Following the promises of wealth and power, Alexei underwent scientific experimentation that resulted in incredible super strength and being fused with an armored rhino suit. Rhino has even proved a worthy match for the Hulk, an impressive feat for anyone. Over the years, Rhino has appeared frequently as a hired gun and enforcer, making things difficult for Spider-Man at every turn. Rhino's Rampaging Power Spidey contends with plenty of super scientists and brilliant minds, as we've already seen on the list. 
but Rhino is trouble because of his raw power. Rhino was able to measure up to the Hulk and can lift hundreds of tons. He punched the hero Nova into orbit and has been shown to be able to completely pin down Spider-Man with just one arm, even forcing Spidey to admit to himself that he is genuinely afraid of the Rhino. Rhino proved to be a one-man wrecking crew when hired by the Evil Claw to help with his invasion of Wakanda. He left a trail of destruction and defeated countless soldiers before being subdued with gas. Rhino might have an incredible punch, but he's only got two arms to swing, unlike number four. Number four, Dr. Octopus. Now, Dr. Otto Octavius may not seem so tough, a middle-aged man with a bad haircut and some flimsy tentacles, but he is one of the only villains to ever truly beat Spider-Man. Doc Ock is the ultimate mix of brains and brawn. His four metal arms make him a physical match for our heroic wall crawler. They are so powerful that in their first battle, Spidey was nearly killed and was almost too scared to face Doc for a rematch. The Superior Skills of Dr. Octopus Doc Ock has complete mental control of the robotic tentacles that were fused to his body. He doesn't have to think to make them move, they are simply a part of him. That control continues even if the arms are physically removed from his body, even if they are across the country. Made from a nearly indestructible metal and equipped with sharp pincers, they can tear through a car like paper and knock Spider-Man out. Auk has even managed to defeat Iron Man and rip off his armor. The arm super strength allows Auk to move at great speeds, toss cars, and even overpower the likes of the Incredible Hulk. Auk's arms have immense strength, but beyond just his powerful robotic limbs, Dr. Octopus is perhaps the smartest villain in Spidey's rogues gallery. That brilliance has helped Auk do something most of Spider's villains only dream of, defeating Spider-Man. Auk didn't just kill Peter Parker, he erased his mind and took over his body. As Peter's mind lay dying in Dr. Octopus's original decaying body, the new Octavius revealed his master plan. Farewell, Peter Parker. Know this, I will carry on in your name. You may be leaving this world, but you are not leaving it to a villain. I swear, I will be Spider-Man. Better yet, with my unparalleled genius and my boundless ambition, I'll be a better Spider-Man than you ever were. From this day forth, I shall become the superior Spider-Man. As Peter Parker, Octavius managed to create a global technology enterprise called Parker Industries and set out to prove himself a more efficient and capable hero than his old nemesis. Ock did a pretty good job until he realized he did not have the unpredictable mind necessary to take down the Green Goblin and brought the original Parker back. Ock eventually reverted to his old criminal ways, but Perhaps there's still the spark of a hero somewhere in that cold heart. Even outside of his time as Superior Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus was a master strategist and schemer, concocting plots that nearly thwarted Spider-Man as the master planner and teaming up with Hydra during their takeover of the United States in Secret Empire. We've seen an unrepentant symbiote and a villain turned hero turned villain. This next bad guy has been all of that and more. Number three, Venom. While he started out as an evil doppelganger of Spidey, this lethal protector has become one of the Marvel Universe's most endearing and complex characters. Venom's power has only grown in recent years, making him a major player on a cosmic scale. Even if he is more of a hero these days, Spider-Man and Venom still butt heads based on their different ideas about what it means to protect innocence. Venom first came to Earth after bonding to Spider-Man during Secret Wars. 
But Spidey soon learned the costume was actually alive and causing violent outbursts. Having discovered the suit was vulnerable to loud noises, Peter retreated to a nearby church and struck its bell to scare the suit away. The black ooze found its way to a rival photographer, Eddie Brock, who believed Spider-Man had cost him his career. Their shared hatred bonded the two, and together they became Venom and swore vengeance on the wall crawler. As Venom, the symbiote possessed all of the powers it had copied from Spider-Man, but with even greater strength. It also possessed an incredible rage and desire to feast on human flesh. I live for these moments, Spider-Man. Eddie Brock beating you down like the weak-kneed little boy that you are, and then leaving you there broken, knowing that any time I want, we can come back and do it again. Venom eventually attempted to use its powers for good, but took lethal measures. Eddie later abandoned the suit after fighting against its murderous tendencies. Venom then bonded to Mac Gargan, the Scorpion. With Scorpion, the symbiote became even more violent and bloodthirsty, lashing out with bestial ferocity and eating people. Sometime later, Venom became bonded to U.S. Army soldier Flash Thompson, who managed to control Venom's worst urges and became a hero known as Agent Venom. Together, the two even joined the Guardians of the Galaxy and discovered Venom's homeworld. But the Venom symbiote eventually returned to its favorite host, Eddie Brock, now cured of much of its worst urges after its experience with its home planet's hive mind. Venom's Powers and Abilities As a symbiote like Carnage, Venom has many of the same powers, including super strength, shape-shifting, and the ability to create weapons and webbing. He has been seen stopping a speeding truck by stepping in front of it, crushing the vehicle while taking no damage himself, and even gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the juggernaut. Venom is immune to Spider-Man's spider sense because of its bond with Peter Parker's DNA. Its shape-shifting powers also allows it to provide a near-perfect camouflage that renders Venom almost completely invisible. Venom's toothy smile isn't just for show either. His bite is extremely poisonous, once rendering Sandman unable to pull himself back together and nearly dead. Recently, after encountering the symbiote god Null and regaining its genetic memory, Venom tapped into new levels of strength and discovered new abilities. This included the ability to create giant bat-like wings that allowed him to fly. Now, Eddie Brock is the king in black, the ruler of the entire symbiote race, able to control or pilot every symbiote connected to the hive mind. However, it has taken a toll on his mortal form and aged him rapidly. Now, his son, Dylan Brock, has taken the Venom symbiote, continuing his father's work as protector of the innocent. Our final two spots are in a whole different category. These are interdimensional vampires and demon-possessed clones that take our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man out of his element. Number 2. Kindred Kindred's true origins are difficult to explain, involving clones, artificial intelligence, deals with the devil, and secret children. But to summarize, this demonic villain managed to kill and revive Peter nearly a dozen times and took control of the Sinister Six, a team of some of Spidey's oldest enemies. Originally introduced as a mysterious, demonic entity with control over strange centipede creatures and the ability to raise the dead, Kindred revealed himself to Spider-Man as his old friend, Harry Osborn. But in fact, Kindred wasn't Harry at all. It was actually two discarded clones who first appeared as Grey Goblins and grew up believing they were the illegitimate children of Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy. They were granted demonic power from a deal Norman Osborn made to sell his son's soul to the devil. As punishment against Harry, the twins, Gabriel and Sarah Stacy, were killed and tortured repeatedly. 
They were granted demonic powers as part of a plan by Mephisto to torture and punish Spider-Man. Mephisto had been haunted by visions of Spider-Man's future descendants defeating him and was obsessed with the idea of destroying the wall crawler before that future could come to pass. Kindred spent months mocking Spider-Man through dreams and complex plots using some of Spider-Man's greatest foes as pawns. Kindred's Astonishing Abilities We were forged in the flames of hell. Soon you'll feel them too. Sarah and Gabriel, acting together under the identity of Kindred, had the same powers and an unrepentant hatred for Spider-Man. Kindred had the ability to control insects, using their trademark centipedes to listen in on conversations and attack. Kindred could communicate and appear to others in dreams, first appearing to Spider-Man as a strange apparition before they ever met in person. Eventually, Kindred pulled Spider-Man into the world of dreams, using it as a doorway to capture him and transport him to Kindred's graveyard lair. Kindred also had control over life and death, reviving Spider-Man's enemy, the Sin Eater, and killing and bringing Spider-Man back to life multiple times in brutal fashion. Through the Sin Eater, Kindred displayed the power to physically manipulate people's sins and even erase the evil within them. Kindred was then able to manifest those sins into literal demons that could possess others. Using this power, Kindred possessed the Order of the Web, a group of spider-themed heroes including Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Woman, Silk, and Madam Web. As walking corpses, the Kindred twins were invulnerable, unharmed by Spider-Man's strongest attacks even as he tore through their bodies. Both kindreds displayed frightening strength, able to beat Spider-Man literally to death. At the end of the day though, Kindred was merely a puppet for greater forces, and when Mephisto was done with them, he left the twins to die. This final group of villains would not be dealt with so easily, and required every Spider-Man from across the multiverse to come together to even temporarily stop them. Number 1. Morlin and the Inheritors Morlin comes from a race of vampiric creatures that feed on spider totems from throughout reality to remain alive. When Morlin first appeared, he nearly killed Spider-Man. Morlin is a tough customer on his own, but when he called in his family, things got really bleak. They traveled through the multiverse, killing spider-themed heroes. It was their deadly rampage that brought about the original Spider-Verse event, which saw every Spider-Man ever teaming up. Morlin and his family, millennia ago, waged war against the Master Weaver, a spider totem who could weave and untangle what he called the web of life and destiny, which allowed him to see across reality and manipulate it. The Master Weaver was defeated and imprisoned by the Inheritors, who used his powers to find other spider totems to kill and absorb and travel through the multiverse. Morlin first came to Earth-616 to battle a spider totem named Ezekiel Sims, who survived and went into hiding. Ezekiel spent decades researching Morlin and devising plots to defeat him, eventually appearing to Peter Parker to prepare him for Morlin's arrival. Morlin first tormented Peter from the shadows, forcing his spider sense to go off unpredictably and seemingly without reason. Distracted and unable to trust his warning signal, Morlin snuck up on Spider-Man as he tried to save people from a fire. That first attack was so strong, Spider-Man thought it was the hardest he had ever been punched. And given how much punishment Spider-Man has taken from the likes of the Rhino and Doc Ock, that's saying something. Morlin told Spider-Man that he would eventually kill him, and now that they had made physical contact, he could track Spider-Man anywhere he went. And it was true, Spider-Man was unable to escape no matter how far he ran. Peter was eventually able to defeat Morlin with the help of some good old-fashioned science. Believing Morlin needed pure essence of a spider totem, 
Peter injected himself with more radiation that was harmless to him because of his already irradiated blood but proved poisonous to Moreland's vampiric powers. With every touch, Moreland absorbed more of Spider-Man's radiation-spiked power. Moreland eventually fell apart. Years later, Moreland returned with his family of inheritors, and this time, it was personal. Today I feed. Every second he lives is an insult to me and my family. He must be shown his place, and I will confirm my place at the top of the food chain. Not only could these ancient vampires travel across dimensions, they had a cloning facility that revived them anytime they died. The Inheritors waged war against all the spider totems in every reality as part of their great hunt. A ragtag group of spider-themed heroes from across the entire multiverse teamed up and enacted a multi-pronged attack to stop the Inheritors. It was only through the spider's cunning that they were able to come out victorious, destroying the cloning facilities and stranding the Inheritors in a reality destroyed by nuclear radiation. But the Inheritors did not go out without a fight killing countless heroes in the war for the Spider-Verse. Moreland's Might In Peter Parker's own words, Moreland was the strongest enemy he had ever faced. Peter was unable to even slow Moreland down through any physical attack. And in fact, even touching Moreland made him stronger because he fed on Spider-Man's life force. In a different battle with the Black Panther, Morlin easily tore apart a net made of the nigh-indestructible metal adamantium. His strength is derived from his vampiric energy absorption abilities. The Inheritors are a race of beings who feast on the mystical energies of special totems, super-powered beings who act as avatars of different animals. Once Morlin gets a taste of an individual's energy, he is able to track his prey with perfect accuracy. Moreland couldn't be harmed by any physical attack. Wolverine's adamantium claws couldn't break his skin, and he even survived a direct impact from a nuclear missile. No wonder it took a whole Spider-Verse to stop him. There you have it. 10 Villains to Give Spider-Man Nightmares Which of these brutal baddies is your favorite? Is there anyone more powerful that missed out on the list? Sound off in the comments. And remember, subscribe to the channel and keep that plot armor charged. I'm Anthony Fan, and farewell.